Hey friends. Okay, we're getting ready to do a nursery tour, but I forgot to tell you this. So we're going to do a little, uh, a little preview, right? A little whoopsie. <laughs> so this Saturday, Saturday, April the 29th, we are going to have Bolton's food truck. It is going to be at the nursery. So make plans to come see us this Saturday, April the 29th. They have the best burgers, delicious burgers and onion rings. I told them to bring extra onion rings because they are literally the best onion rings I have ever put in my mouth. They are divine. So come support one of our local um, small businesses, just like Creekside Bolton's. They do a fantastic job with their burgers and all of their lunch items. Cannot wait to see you this Saturday, April 29th. And then they're going to be coming back two times in May, both on Saturdays. We will have those dates for you. So, all right, enjoy the nursery tour. Good morning from a very wet and rainy North Carolina. Welcome to this week's nursery tour. So we're gonna go through and show you some fantastic things that are here at the nursery available for you to come and purchase right now. We got in a fantastic shipment of shrubs and perennials and some annuals from a fellow nursery down east yesterday afternoon. Clearly, we haven't even had time to unload them, but what we did is pulled about, about one of everything, some of the things that we knew that you would be really interested in pulled them out and so we're going to go through them and show you these fantastic plants that are going to be ready now and then we're going to go hit the shade perennials because we've got some beautiful shade perennials that we have been growing then we're going to head up to production and show you gorgeous beautiful color um, that you can incorporate into your garden right now so let's just go through we're going to start with a small and then we'll work our way up we got some really fun dahlias these are um part of um, they're also within the proven winners line i believe they're they're the proven selections so if you're like well they're in a black pot why are they not because they're proven selections so these dahlias are going to be fantastic to add gorgeous color to your um, containers and landscape right now this is the tequila sunrise, sunrise? yeah tequila sunrise so very good name for a flowering summer annual right here we go tequila sunrise gorgeous now these are going to be about this height they're not going to be those huge massive dahlias that we grow in our gardens so they're going to be nice and petite loads of blooms on them right and so just like with other dahlias the more you deadhead the more you cut the blooms off the more they're going to produce so this is going to be a flower that you are going to want to deadhead and keep um, neat and tidy now i know cozumel is not blooming but this is cozumel and she is a beautiful nice double solid pink so really nice it's not a very pastel pink but it's not a hot pink it's kind of right there in the middle like just a good solid pink so if you're looking for um, kind of that thriller filler for a container and you want a solid pink then cozumel dahlia would be a great one and these are one gallons so these are going to be nice substantial size and they have got roots all the way through i can feel them in the pot very nice and healthy one of the most popular salvias that we have is rocking playing the blues now depending on where you live what zone you are this could be a perennial for you they're hardy in zones seven and warmer but this is a magnificent salvia that will produce flowers all season long obviously these are one gallons and they are um, nice and full when they're not wet they will have more of kind of a silver green appearance on the leaves and then just massive blooms i had these last year in front of the david austin roses they're at the patio massive huge plants that bring in pollinators by the hundreds and thousands bumblebees honeybees love this plant it is a great one and it is going to be in full to part sun so you're going to need at least five hours for this guy to have um, a maximum performance oh here's one sorry y'all here's one that's a little bit further along so you can start to see it does have a different bloom than the other rockin salvias so it's just a not quite as tubular as the other ones but just a beautiful nice kind of like a lavender blue to it um, really fun we've also got more of the skyrocket grasses so we are growing these and we have these but when i did the aqua pots um, last week 
I used Skyrocket in the container and that day and that weekend, people were grabbing these things and taking them out like crazy. So we thought we better shore up the inventory a little bit. This is an annual grass, right? It is an annual grass, nice variegated. So it has a green on the inside and creamy white on the edges. It will do beautiful white plumes and it will get to be about like, what was it, like three feet? Kind of like two and a half feet tall. Very, very uh, soft and flowing. Does great in containers. I put it in the aqua pot. Also does really well in the landscape. We're gonna use it in the landscape here at the entrance beds to the nursery. Um, so we have, oh, we also have some geese flying over our head right now. So we've got the skyrocket. Next, we have got a great perennial that again is so incredibly popular. This is the Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. Wonderful perennial that is going to be a full sun perennial, nice and low. It is going to be blooming this time of year. So ours over at the Easyscape in front of the nursery is just blooming its head off. I'm gonna grab the tag right quick so you can see those pretty flowers. It is gonna be hardy in zones three to eight. It is a long blooming perennial, perfect for those small areas. You kind of want it up close to maybe your sidewalk or the front of the bed because it is really low. It's only gonna get 12 to 14 inches tall. After it finishes blooming, you can shear it back and then you'll get um, some more blooms throughout the season. Another great, great way to support your pollinators because they love these little blue flowers. Honeybees are really attracted to it. So we have those as well. Now, hosta. So I'm going to give you, you know, Jimmy, I just tell you how it is. We brought this hosta in and there's no tag for this hosta. So y'all just going to have to go with me. And I looked it up and there's not a ton of information on it, but we brought this hosta in, Jerry did, because he has had customers asking for this. So this is called Sun Hosta, okay? That is just its name, Sun Hosta. A nice variegated um, leaf on it, a little bit of a smaller size, nice green in the center, creamy white edges on the outside, and it has a little bit of a weighty appearance. Now, according to its website, it can take full sun in the southeast. I'm just saying, everything inside of me as a gardener in North Carolina is like, no, not really. We're going to have to test this out. But if you have experience with sun hosta, please let us know. Put it in the comments. I, um, but it says it does great in the southeast with the heat and the humidity and can do the full sun. So I'm just going to put it out there. We have a bunch of them. So you, you can come and we will experiment together. I would love to be proven completely wrong about hostas going in the sun here in the Piedmont of North Carolina. It does do really pretty white flowers on it. Um, I don't know the zone and I don't know the, the height on it because like I said, it was kind of hard to find a little bit of information. So if you know more about the Sun Hosta, please let us know. But this is one of those where we were listening to our customers and they were asking for this. So we found it and we brought it in. So we have got the Sun Hostas. Now, um, shrubs. Let's move on to shrubs. Hydrangea. Now, Incredible Blush. So I am a huge fan of the Incredibles, right? These are smooth hydrangeas. They bloom on new growth. Big, huge, massive mop head blooms on them. Well, this is Blush. It will have, as you can see from the picture, a nice, soft, pale pink um, hue to it. This is color specific, meaning your pH in your soil is not going to affect the color of the flower. It is going to be that blush pink. Um, it's got beautiful new growth on it. I dare say, I don't know if those are buds that are getting ready to form right there, but just a beautiful look to it. It is going to be hardy in zones probably, yep, three to eight. It is going to be four to five feet tall and wide sun to part shade. I have Incredibles in full sun. They are on irrigation. If it's not on irrigation, then probably you need to give it a break from that hot afternoon sun. Um, but if you're looking for a nice soft pink, really full hydrangea where you're guaranteed blooms every single year, Incredible Blush would be a great one for you. One of the great surprises for me um, this winter when we had that, uh, you know, Arctic blast that came through was my October Magic Ruby Camellias. This is a beautiful one that is flushed out with tons of new growth. This is a nice low growing camellia that takes the full sun. It is a double ruby um, bloom on it. Really nice, deep red. 
I have three of these on the berm um, that separate the nursery from the house. They are on the downside of the berm and they came through that Arctic blast like champs. I think they were just a little bit more protected than the other side, but they are growing and doing wonderful and they can handle the full sun. So if you're looking for a low growing camellia, this is a Sasanqua, so it's going to bloom in the fall. October Magic Ruby is going to be a great one for you. Um, really nice, low maintenance, beautiful plants right here. We also have, um, we'll work our way back here in a minute. We brought in some ferns, right? So I'm sure probably just about everywhere, like ferns are kind of one of those iconic, classic plants that you have in the summertime. So we have the Boston fern, right? Which is your wonderful, fantastic fern that you can have in a hanging basket and you can, tons of people will put them on their porches, right? So if you have that shady area, those are the Boston ferns. These are in hanging baskets. I probably would recommend that you either take it out of here and move it up or put it in a bigger container because the more soil you have, the bigger your fern is gonna get and the less you have to water it. So we have Boston ferns available. We also have beautiful Kimberly Queens. Now Kimberly Queens, um, excuse, <sighs> rainy Saturday mornings are just so much fun here at the nursery. Um, Kimberly Queens are going to be much more sun tolerant. In fact, I was just saw a, a gardener on um, Instagram talking about Kimberly Queens this morning. And she is a southern gardener talking about that you can absolutely put your Kimberly Queens in full sun. Just need to give them time like now is a great time to get them either in the containers or whatever and introduce them to the sun now because they are, um, of course, the sun's a little bit more tender and that way they get nice and tough when the summer sun comes. But a nice big presence, right? I mean, this is already at least three three and a half feet tall this would be a beautiful fern in a nice big huge container somewhere oh like on the porch it's classic you just cannot beat ferns they are beautiful now we got three more shrubs here that we want to highlight these are not um, new by any means these are just ones that we cannot keep in stock so we brought them in we brought in a ton of the sprinter boxwoods love sprinter boxwoods from proven winners this was developed at nc state by dr tom rainey and does a great performer here um, just handles the sun or the shade anything in between very deer resistant so it can handle uh, deer pressure deer resistant not deer proof um, and is a wonderful foundation planting it is just a gorgeous classic sprinter boxwood does great I prune mine once a year. I'm getting ready to prune mine because it's put on tons of new growth. And I just want to take a little bit of that heaviness off because especially when it rains, they'll sometimes kind of go open when they have all that brand new growth. If you can come in and just gently shape them, it makes them nice and sturdy. And so we've got the sprinter box, we've got tons of those. These three pair beautifully together. We have the ever red Laura Petalum. Laura Petalums, of course, are wonderful southern shrubs that keep this beautiful, nice, really rich burgundy color all year long. They keep that color. This ever red, of course, is going to have red flowers on it. And it gets to be a little bit bigger. This one is going to be, let me find my measurements here. It is going to be five to six feet tall and wide. So this would be beautiful behind your sprinter boxwoods, right? So if you have your sprinters, just imagine it with me, people, all right? So you've got your sprinter back here. You've got your lower petalum back here. Lower petalums are fast growers too. So it's not gonna take long for it to get nice and big. And then in the front mixed in with your, um, boxwoods then you've got abelias and this says that this is kaleidoscope but i was to say that's that's mislabeled that is not kaleidoscope that is radiance radiance um, and kaleidoscope were both discovered here in north carolina really great plants radiance is that classic look right green center creamy white edge on it and it all pairs beautifully together these all three are evergreens you're going to have this color year round this is a when i say simple i mean like classic easy pairing that's extremely low maintenance that can do i would say anywhere from full sun to part shade so for this to work because with the abelia you would need a minimum 
of four to five hours of sun and then they would handle it like a champion so beautiful pairing so if you need a classic quote easy design for the front of your house boom there you go jenny just did it for you all right um so we're going to get all this unloaded we've got more hibiscus we've had like the little kim series from proven winners nice petite roses of sharon those are on there as well and i think that's the only one we did not pull off so come see us uh coming on down here as we mosey on down through the shade garden here at the pines moving along everything's coming out so nice huh savannah urns yes so we have got the unique stone has been flying out of here um the savannah urns are one of those classic ones i'm secretly hoping that some of them or at least one of them doesn't sell so that i can incorporate it into the garden you know what jerry's look is behind the camera right now right and uh I can, I can. I can just yeah. order one for August because yeah. May 6th is our deadline for the August delivery. So you heard it right here on camera, folks, that I can just order one for myself. And I think I already have the perfect place for it in the Woodland Garden up by the entrance. It's going to be gorgeous. So there you go. Um, what, color do you want? what color? Oh, that's, that's hard to ask right now. I don't know. So give you an update here on the Easy Scape. Uh, we are underneath the pines and this is a constant battle of the pine trees and needles falling you can see obviously we have installed irrigation we haven't turned it on yet and i'm going to come back and i'll cover all this up but i wanted to give you an update on how this easy skate for the shade is doing we have not watered this at all this season um it's only gotten rain i have not fertilized it yet like it's really been neglected and that is why the easy scapes work so well because you can um, even with minimal <laughs> input from the gardener it really does perform well so we have um this is diamond lake diamond lake hosta we have three of those then we have the other perennials that spotted through here are the spot on pulmonaria nice deer resistant colorful low growing perennial we have the crested surf uh, japanese painted fern really beautiful color on that i mean it's they are coming out the more water you give these ferns the bigger they're going to be and then the um last but not least i'll use my stick here as a pointer we have this would be evening gown uh euchre. this is the dressed up evening gown from proven winners all of these are from proven winners but the easy scapes are just such a fantastic kind of plant by number garden that you um, it's our job to come up with pairings that work really well together i will link the easy scape website and you can go on there and there's tons of different gardens that you can look for whether it's deer resistant pollinator um, you name it there are lots of options that you can look for and um, it's a great great concept brought to us by our friends over at walters gardens and proven winners because walters gardens is the home of the proven winner perennials so we're gonna toss that in there all right so over here we have talked about um this is kind of the nursery for the shade perennials and growing all sorts of beautiful things so we have started incorporating them over here i believe that's for a landscape job right so that's a holding zone over there um but all of these perennials are just doing really well like talking about the pulmonaria here we have beautiful this is probably going to be pink blue um really nice beautiful foliage on it doing great so all of these are shade perennials we're talking about right we've got the sun king right the areola sun king look at these we have not talked about these because they have not been ready but they are definitely coming ready this is the gold heart bleeding heart so if you're looking for an old-fashioned bleeding heart this is a really fun one because of that chartreuse color on it they are gorgeous plants absolutely stunning so those i would say are ready to go like look how that just pops out those are the same ones right just a different crop but you can see how they just really stand out in the shade garden so we've got grasses we've got hostas we've got ferns all sorts of fun things that are nice and growing so this is we have customers that shop over here it's not necessarily for sale yet because 
they're not completely root the roots aren't developed um, but they are doing really well another fantastic um, euchara that we love and adore this is the dolce wildberry a fantastic euchara that will give you gorgeous grape purple color really nice pop can you imagine this with that gold bleeding heart would that not be stunning i mean just gorgeous and you can see them here in mass obviously most people aren't going to plant them in mass like that but doing really nice if you want the traditional bleeding heart the nice green we have that as well and then these hostas are a little bit more developed um, so just know that we have got tons and tons of different ones this is the classic sum and substance um, if you watched the um, video last week this week i guess it was last week whatever week it was of me up at the entrance bed some in substance those were those hostas that were in there nice big classic hosta gives you loads and loads of color we have friends that come and visit the nursery and ask about our infamous hosta that's in the refrigerator the drinking gourd here we have some that have been growing since last season they're getting some good size to them so we have drinking gourds available as well um, and that's the fun thing though about hostas and shade gardens you can mix and match and just have fun with them you don't have to be like super matchy matchy right just if you want to have 10 hostas in your garden each one could be totally different it's when you mix them together just work from the tallest to the shortest and it will be absolutely beautiful so lots available here um, at the nursery whether you have sun or shade or you need deer resistant or you need whatever it is you need we have got it i think we're going to run up to the greenhouse right quick and we're going to show you all of the gorgeous color that is up there plus it's dry so we're going to head up there here we are up at production this is what we call production number one because it was the first one built you can see the massive color behind me the hanging baskets are just coming into all of their glory gorgeous color whether it is a super bell like the tropical sunrise that we have right here which is a beautiful coral and yellow nice full thick this is what happens y'all when you feed your flowering annuals on a regular basis jerry has these on a great regimen lots of food and they are very happy so you've got tropical sunrise you have got um this is the mini vista hot pink which is just a classic hot pink flower these are 10 inch baskets just for a reference behind there is dreamsicle <laughs> we were up here i think it was uh last week and i was told jerry i was like i have zero plans for dreamsicle but seeing these baskets makes me want to put dreamsicle somewhere so I, i'm sure there will be a dreamsicle popping up somewhere in the garden really soon and then um, the yellow this is what we tell you yellow makes a huge impact from a distance so this is just the super bells yellow it is the improved one we're proven winners improved them last year nice great vigorous root system does great and then of course another one that is doing really well is the super tunia mini vista white and it is gorgeous this is what i'm going to be using in the back patio i love this plant beautiful solid clear yellow uh, yellow listen to me white flower gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so hanging baskets they are flying out of here we have more in the next greenhouse i just wanted to share these with you and then salvias welcome to salvia land these are the rock and salvias that are in gallons um, and they are they love being in a big pot because these are such vigorous plants so i'm going to try to get two here so to show you the difference rockin' deep purple i think you know which one that one is and then rockin' blue suede shoes very nice big open flowers on them the hummingbirds love these plants and it really is it's just depending on what color you want right so they grow in that same um, conditions nice full sun in a container or the landscape if you're putting it in a container i would say get the biggest one you can handle because these things will grow um, full sun massive pollinator attractor moderate feeders right so you're it's not going to be like a super heavy feeder like your super bells or your super tunias but they certainly benefit from being fertilized every uh, now and again so we've got those and then the fuchsia so fuchsia is 
that same type of flower but just a beautiful hot fuchsia pink color and you can't go wrong these are all great it really truly just depends on um, your color palette and what you're going to be using um, in your garden that year so the salvias are doing really well um, as are verbenas lots of verbenas verbenas are wonderful if you want that beautiful like trailing habit or a ground cover with lots of flowers here we have the superbena um, imperial blue this is um, if you're a fan of Laura Gardenancer, this is one of her absolute must-haves that she loves. So we have got these in gallons. This is one plant, y'all. We started the season with some of the verbenas in grande containers, but because they are such vigorous plants, we put most of them in gallons. So folks are like, can I divide it? Well, no, because it's just one plant. So, I mean, these are like really vigorous. We've got roots coming out the bottom. This is why we love this plant because you get a lot of bang for your buck. It covers a large ground. And then of course, the um, absolutely gorgeous, see, this is what happens. We'll just pull them out together. Uh, sparkling Rosé. Sparkling Rosé is a beautiful, kind of like a tricolor. You've got white, light pink, dark pink on those really pretty blooms. Nice, good spreading habit on them. Fantastic, gorgeous. So we've got those going on. And then let's see, we wanna go walk this way. Okay, it's kind of, it's a little tricky getting through here, my friends. So we're gonna come on around, um, okay, Guara. We've had a lot of folks uh, ask about this, like you just keep going past it. This is the pink Picotty. This is a wonderful one. It is, we sell it as an annual, but it is a perennial. It will be a perennial in zones six to 11. So a large amount of the country can use this as a perennial. This is gonna be a little bit taller than like the Caralee Petite Pink. This is going to be uh, every bit of 24 inches in the landscape. Beautiful, nice, flowing habit to it. It's like a grass in the habit of that. It has, it has the height and the movement, but of course you get these beautiful flowers and there's buds all over it. What I will do is come through periodically and just trim off like the older, longer, uh, blooms like these little stalks so that way it kind of refreshes and they flush out again but wonderful full sun definitely full sun great for attracting your pollinators they love them um as the um what is this called cleanomy thank you so we have the senorita rosalita and we have the senorita blanca so one's pink one's white um these are thornless. They are um, not going to seed, reseed. They are sterile. Uh, it has a kind of a bad rap that it will just spread all through your garden. Not these, not these. Gorgeous height, gorgeous color. And this is what we call they bury their dead. As it grows up, the dead blooms just get covered up by the new growth and the new blooms. So there's absolutely no need to deadhead your Cleome. They are gorgeous, absolutely stunning. Pentas, we've talked about these. I've used these in my landscape just here recently. This is the rose in a gallon size container because again, nice vigor to them. Jerry's having technical issues, I can tell. Here we go. Maybe that helps. Look at that. This again is one plant in there with huge flower heads on it. Beautiful color. Japanese beetles do not like them. I always try to push that point so you don't have to worry about your Japanese beetles on these. Butterflies love them. Full sun conditions for sure on this. And then um, we've not talked a ton about some of the perennial grasses as we come down. The brand new sweet potato vines from Proven Winners. This is the upside. These are the climbers, right? So we have them in the black in the gallon containers. This is the um, Sweet Caroline Upside Black Coffee. Y'all, this will grow anything. If you stand still long enough, it will climb you. Um, one plant is super vigorous and will climb. So if you're looking for a beautiful ground cover or something to climb up it, then that would be great. Jerry's handed me this because of the contrast. So if you put this, maybe you have a wall or a trellis or an obelisk, 
something you want a climber on, put this in there and then put your white mini vista in the front gorgeous contrast against the two of them whenever you can get major color contrast with your plants that's when it makes really big um, statements and really pops out so gorgeous combination with that right there um, over here okay so some perennial grasses that we have been growing this is first night and first night is a perennial black fountain grass purple fountain grass it um, gets really nice height to it beautiful it does love it hot so the maintenance the care on this Jerry you want to chime in on that it's like what how do they care for it in the winter time as a perennial grass get it planted now. right so you want to get it planted now so that way it, its roots which you can see these roots coming out yeah. like look very vigorous get this in the ground now the key is is to get it in and let it get really well established and then you only cut it back by what 18 inches like you want to leave 18 inches worth of growth on it and then you can trim it back but like in February sometime. right in late 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 winter that's when you trim it back so we've got the first nights available we also have some skyzacarium grasses skyzacarium is um a blue grass right so it's a perennial blue grass this is twilight zone a little blue stem blue skyzacarium trying to figure out how to spell that is quite fun it is going to be about four four and a half feet tall and hardy in zones three to nine full sun so blue grasses are so much fun because they bring a different color so if you have the purple fountain grass and then you have this twilight zone with that kind of that bluish green hue to it fantastic also lemongrass we've had people asking if we have lemongrass we do so lemongrass for us is an annual but it is a wonderful way to add color height structure to your garden while repelling mosquitoes so lemongrass it is here it's in gallons nice size two of them um, so we have them available because before we know it it's going to be mosquito season for sure and then the last plant i want to cover today is the suncredible sunflower we've not talked about these a ton this year this is suncredible saturn now if you look at the tag right it is a bicolor has that nice dark center to it yep there's one over there um let jerry show that to you the reason that a lot of these in here are not um, already changing is because that the plastic in the greenhouse pulls out protects with the uv light and so they need the uv light to change the color some of them have started to turn some of them will once they get out in the open beautiful reblooming sunflower nice and big like a four by four make great cut flowers the more you cut them the more flowers they produce gorgeous plants especially in the landscape because they get so nice and big um, I think that's it for today we could keep talking and talking and talking about plants but the nursery is open and we probably need to go take care of our customers um, so as always we hope you have found this fun um, informative and inspirational as always thanks so much for gardening with Creekside y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video bye friends